Don't make Ugg sounds just because you came out of surgery. Uh, <laughs> I'll do what I want, woman. She, she, she's got you there. <laughs> yes. And it stops you from going, <sighs> or whatever it is that you do. I wasn't going to sigh exasperatedly. <sighs> yeah, the, the, what you did was kind of like... <sighs> <laughs> Refreshing and yeah. delicious. Anyway, welcome! Yes. It's the podcast. I have the strangest sensation that we didn't do an August podcast. Since right. we did? Yeah, I, I'm, like, I'm, I know we did, but I had the sensation that we didn't because at the very beginning of September, we, uh, me and Rifty did the, um, the escape room. Escape key. Yes, and because it was so close to the end of the previous month, I thought it was actually something that we had done in August, and then I'm like, did we talk about that? And I couldn't remember talking about it, so I thought we didn't do an August podcast. <laughs> Did you listen to our August podcast? No. That was, like, that... fucking food. Yeah. With oh, chicken. God. Why did you bring that up again? We were a month without it. Now it's back. Yes. <laughs> and someone actually looked up that cougar blowjob video. <laughs> I'm doing my job. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh... So, September has been an interesting month. I had to end two series on my channel and start two new ones. And I'm going insane trying to actually keep up with it at all. Haha. Uh-huh. That's your own fault. That is my own fault. It doesn't help that Pokemon Conquest is not the fastest game, unfortunately. Yeah, you like clocked like 180 hours into 185 it. hours to the original. And that was like trying to get perfect links and level up all the warlords. And it was a game I enjoyed, clearly. But playing it again, I forgot how shitty the beginning of the game is. And it's not that it's a bad game. It's just that the entire first mission is a bluff. There's no satisfaction to the end of it. There's no consequences. So you don't learn how to properly play the game and you can't upgrade anything. So what you can do is extremely limited. And it doesn't actually teach you the game properly enough to be ready for what comes afterwards. You get any experience? You get experience for your guys, yes. So well, at, I, least, at least you get that. Yeah. If nothing else. But yeah, the major two things cut out are enemies never attack you. So you never have to worry about putting oh, your defenses up properly. That's terrible. Yeah, and you cannot upgrade areas in order to get new Pokemon to appear. So you're stuck with like the basics that most places provide. And if you get a place that has an upgraded area, then you can take advantage of it. But other than, you can't do it on your own. So those two major aspects of the game are cut out, and it's just like, ugh, I want to do those things because I want to be getting people's perfect links and things like that, not dealing with whatever crap they came to me with. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Anyway, though, that's that. And Link to the Past was randomized over the course of September. What do you mean? Uh, a ROM came out for Link to the Past randomized, where you can run it randomized, similar to like a Pokemon randomizer. Every chest you open in Link to the Past is a random treasure. Oh, shit. Yeah, it makes the game incredibly difficult. And ironically, it was the same month, because I finished Ocarina of Time, that I had to start Link to the Past. I didn't start it randomized. So you could actually (laughs) be stuck in the game, couldn't you? You can. But the thing with Link to the Past and why it's randomizable as compared to other Zelda games is that technically you can do anything in any order. All of the dungeons only require the item that you would normally get in that dungeon. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think, honestly, if going forward with zelda i'd like to see it done that way because they did it it that way in link between worlds as well that being that you know it's basically Link to the past two and they did it in um oh fuck there was another one they did it in ocarina no ocarina you require the bow for basically every level and well you no it. you can swap it out for the the hook shot if it's uh short enough still those are two items that you get in two very specific dungeons that you can't progress without. Like, mm. you can't do anything in the Shadow Temple without the long hook. Like, after Link to the Past, and I, I get it, because it, it gives you a sense of progression that now you're able to do these things, the levels started requiring what you got from previous levels to make it a linear pattern. Yeah. But Link to the Past didn't technically have that. You could go to any dungeon. Sometimes it was difficult to get to the entrances without... A particular item but you could technically go to pretty much any dungeon and randomized because you don't know what you're gonna get out of it like i think uh nikos a friend of mine was playing the randomized and the first treasure he ended up getting was like the power glove so he could lift rocks immediately 
So there's a bunch of levels that opened up to him because now he got the ability to lift, which is one of the first three things you get. But because of how early he got it, he can go to basically any level, but he can't complete all of them because sometimes they just don't have the keys for it. Oh, yeah, shit. Or, you know, he needs the item that actually originally came in that dungeon. But yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. And there's also a Super Mario World randomized as well, where you can randomize what comes out of blocks, where the enemies are, the properties of enemies. They've even added extra power-ups as well, so you can get the hammer power-up. Oh, cool. You randomize it properly. So, there's a lot of neat stuff that came out in September, in, like, late August. Yes. Yeah. Game rant. <laughs> and game rant over. Yes. Now let's turn to Rifty and see how her month has been. <laughs> um, eventful. A lot of preparing, because, as I had stated earlier, I went in for surgery uh, late, late September. I'm still recovering. Everything's going good, though. Everything went really well. Yay. It's just, the last time I went to surgery, I was like seven or something like that for my tonsils. I don't remember like anything from that experience. Probably for the best. <coughs> Most likely. Um, so it's one of those experiences where I went in to the hospital, I got all checked in, and they gave me a bunch of IVs, and they screwed up on my one hand, so they had to do it in my other hand, so now I have holes in both of my hands. Uh... Well, at least you don't have massive bruising like some people get. Yeah, they, you can see right, right there, they tried to get it in, it wouldn't go in properly, so oh, then yeah. they had to like put it in down here on the other hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't realize how fucking terrifying <laughs> operating rooms are when you first walk. I, mean, I have no glasses, I took my glasses, and they're leading me in with my little IV thing, and they take me and they put me on the table, and then they like take these two wings off the side, strap my arms down. And I'm like, oh sweet Jesus, oh sweet Jesus, oh sweet Jesus. And then nothing. Because they don't tell you anymore. When I was a kid, like they had like this mask which not had the knockout stuff in it. Yeah. And they're like, okay, like Count back from a hundred. Count back from ten or whatever. But I think they're like, think of pretty princesses or whatever, because I was like a little tiny girl, right? Oh yeah. They're like, think of pretty princesses. Yeah, and men then... get math. Girls get princesses. <laughs> I'd want to think of pretty princesses. <laughs> but anyways, they're like, okay, we're going to let you... And then you kind of drift off. And you're like, oh, okay. And then you wake up. No, this one is just like, they're doing a bunch of stuff. And then you're out. It's just... <laughs> you're gone. And then... Weird, you think they check with you and make sure you're still out. Yeah, but then in like no time at all, you wake up and you're like, oh, God, I hurt. Oh, uh, why? Oh, right. Knives. And they're like... What's your pain level at? One out of ten. Seven. Okay, let's get her some morphine. What's your pain level at? Four. Let's get her some more morphine. What's your pain level at? Two. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <coughs> In that case, they gave me two Tramacet and they let Isaac into the room. Yeah. Meanwhile, I played uh, Oracle of Ages in the lobby for like four hours. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, yeah, I was like, they told, they came out and told me that, you know, everything was done, you're fine, you weren't ready for visitors yet because you're still sleeping, and then they just left for like two hours. Oh, no, no, they said you were awake. Oh, they did? Yeah, they're like, she's awake, and she's in recovery, and then they just left, and I was like, okay, recovery has a big locked door, I can't get in there. <laughs> I didn't even realize I had said I was awake, because like, honestly, I was awake for like, what felt like, I don't know, ten minutes, and then they let you in, so... That's really weird. Yeah, it was like a solid few hours between them telling me that she was done and me actually being pulled in there. That's so weird. Unlike, you know, when I had surgery where, same thing, I went out to get my mouth redone because I, I was after my assault. So they were going to wire everything. So I pass out and then I wake up and I've got the face of my aunt, my dad, and my stepmom like three inches from my face and I'm like, whoa, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Like, last thing I remember, I was in a cold room. <laughs> I passed out. Now I'm in a warm blanket and all of my family are here. This is terrifying. Because <laughs> I don't even think they were at the hospital prior to my surgery. So I just woke up and they were there. <laughs> yeah, but really, like, it felt like no time had passed between going out and waking back up. Yeah, it's sleep for you. It's... Have you have any major surgeries, Foxen? Nope. 
No. Ah. Drugs are good. No, the best, the uh, most surgery, I guess you could say, I've ever been through was stitches on my uh, on my hands, two different times. The last time was because I was playing soccer. I would have been about like ten or eleven. And uh, I tripped uh, over another player's foot. My hand landed on a piece of uprooted, uprooted tree root that was just sticking up. And it was, like, mm. it was three stitches. It hurt like a bitch because like, I was a child. And as a child, I was a fucking baby. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but the first time actually was a literal baby. I was four months old and I was getting my extra thumb on my left hand removed. Do you kind of wish you got to keep it? I do. I kind of figure, feel as though I would have been better at video games, especially nowadays. That way I can hit the D-pad and the joystick at the same time. <laughs> look at this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> look at these Look at these fools. Is it a doping scandal if he's born with it? <laughs> I, I can control and taunt. <laughs> but yeah, look at all these fools with their only one thumb. That, I, am, I am the superior race. <laughs> that's no fair. That guy's got three thumbs to play with. Well, he should have been born a defect, kid. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> uh. not, not my fault your mom didn't smoke during your pregnancy. <laughs> uh. You're like, my mom did not smoke during my pregnancy. The double she did. She didn't smoke during uh, any of her pregnancies, but she was smoking before and after, so I can't I can't rule that out. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, it's... at least she stopped during. He's like, oh, oh, damn! I got pregnant again. Better put this out. <laughs> no. Into her cup of coffee. Just fuck. Yeah. Uh, drink my tobacco. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's not Time right. Time to at take all. up some chewing tobacco. Two thumbs wouldn't help with escape key though. That was an experience. Yeah, it was really fun though. Yeah, you never know. It could have helped. <laughs> and have a better grip on stuff. Not really. No, or at least not with the puzzles that we had to deal with. What, what sort of puzzles did you have to deal with? Uh, me and her were divided into separate rooms, actually. So we did different puzzles. Oh, cool. Yeah, no spoil. No, we are not allowed to have any major spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers, because then you can beat our high score. <laughs> <laughs> the high score we didn't get. Yeah. Um, but basically, what it is is there's two types of like puzzles in the escape key. Okay. Um, there's puzzles that specifically have to deal with getting out of the room and then there's additional puzzles that just rack up your points oh, okay they watch you through cameras and they have microphones so they can hear everything you say and they can see everything you do so you're not allowed to go on the internet yeah, yeah. they take away all your phones they have a lockbox oh, okay yeah phones keys everything everything extra goes in the lockbox yep um and um they say uh basically don't force anything if you can't like reach it normally or you can't like you know if if it doesn't come off with the force you would take to like pick up a cup then it's not meant to come off the wall which is great because my group ripped open a book that was screwed shut what they did they were like there's got to be something in this book right and they ripped it open but all of the books there were screwed shut because none of them were relevant yeah so they ripped open a book and i was like really wow <laughs> <laughs> my group started a handcuff together, like in a big daisy chain. Really? Yeah, so you had one hand connected to one person and one hand connected to another person. This hand's connected to the best friend. The best friend's connected to the boyfriend. Yes. Boyfriend's connected to his ex. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thing is, is like, like Isaac and I have a bit of experience with this kind of stuff because we play like the um, escape room games like 999 and that whole, the Zero Escape series i yeah. like those games they're really fun i got stumped a few times though so. um but anyway so we have a little bit of experience with how these types of things kind of work uh the people that we were going in with had like no idea so in my room there's like a um like the very first room when they handcuff you together they give you a key but it's hidden in in something and they give you the something but my group didn't search it properly enough so we're all like just hanging around, looking at stuff, all handcuffed together, and there's like a, like an iPad in the wall where they can give you hints, and it's like the key is in the thing, and we're all like ah, because if they think you're getting like too stuck, that like they'll give you little tips and hints because they want you to finish. Yeah. Um, ish. Ish. We got to literally the last lock on the last door. 
Oh, damn. But yeah, it's think... like a series of connecting rooms that you have to work through. There's like five or six different rooms that you have to kind of work your way through to get to the end. Yeah. Uh, my group, I had to corral nine other people, one of whom was a small child, one of whom was his dad, who had a very nasty habit of... He was the, like, whereas I was the, the, the calm, collected leader, he was the bull leader, the do it until it works. So he'd sit there, like, fidgeting with locks and trying every possible combination to try to get in, whereas I'm sitting there doing the puzzle to figure it out. So half of my team was following him, and the other half was always calling me around, like, hey, what do we do on this? What do we do on this? And I'm like, I, I can do that, but, you know, yeah. I, I'm trying to help with 40 other people here. <laughs> so... Unfortunately, Nine. yeah. I think we had like three or four puzzles left to do before we would have finished it, but I had the answers to most of them. The difficulty was our last room was pitch black. Oh, shit. And there was only one shitty flashlight. Yeah. We had... So nine people trying to corral them all. Everyone else is in the brighter rooms trying to figure whatever out. And, you know, I'm here in the dark room trying to put pieces together while I got a bull running around. Um, our, our last room, we had a light switch, and one person was trying to like do a combination lock with a couple of combinations we had found, and somebody in our group kept turning off the light. And he's like, please, can I have that on? Click. Please, can I you leave that on? Click. Please, can you leave that on? Click. Yeah. And I want to be like, strangle you. He's trying to do a puzzle. Why was he turning the light off? I don't know. This person just kept turning the light off on him. Constantly. I would have grabbed him and be like, Psh, right across the face. Like, do it again, I slap you harder. Yeah, I think they're actually doing new puzzles for Halloween. Oh, sweet. So I think they're. Um, I'd love to go try. I still haven't been. Halloween, I hey, but I've, I've known about Escape and Key for actually, like a year. The thing about Escape Key is actually they have like affiliation with like four or five different escape room uh things in different cities yeah, like and Hamilton. you got a punch card and if you get a punch from each one you actually get entered into a draw for like a thousand dollars oh cool that was five thousand anyway doesn't it's matter like that. It's, a, it's a draw it's a draw um yeah no fox if you want to go i'll go with you i very much enjoyed the experience i think like i i think like i mentioned the only thing that i would want to do ahead of time for next time is to know my team yeah because I had nine people running around, and some of them were decent at doing puzzles, and some of them were good at other things, and consistently they were asking me for help. So I ended up spending a lot of the time more or less just wandering between groups because they expected me to play the leader role and know what I was doing. So I want to know my team going in and know, okay, you're a very capable person at finding things. Go and search the room. You're a very per capable person of solving this puzzle. So this is a riddle-based puzzle. You work on that while well, I'm going to go hack the computer or something like yeah the the person who the people who were running it said the best makeup for a room is actually like um an older person um two men two women and a child or two hmm. because the little kids can get underneath stuff and like they'll look places that other people don't think to look oh shit it's like that yeah yeah so, like, little kids are actually, like, if you have one or two littler kids, it's actually better for you because they have their own way of thinking and they'll look in places a lot of people wouldn't think to look. Well, we'll have Isaac, so we got <laughs> little kid part covered. I don't think I qualify as the little kid. I don't know. How tall are you? <laughs> it's not so much that. Is that I can relate to a kid, but I, I have lost the ability to understand a lot of the ways that they think. Like... In our group, we had, again, a very young kid. He was going around, he was finding a lot of stuff, and I was very much thankful for him to be able to do that. He's also one of the few people who managed to, I think he was the one who managed to open our bookcase because he was just playing with everything and he got it. Huh, nice. And it was just because he was young and he was thinking to do those things. He was just like, hey, this kind of did a thing. Let's keep doing it. Whereas I'm like, you know, trying to solve each puzzle I run into one at a time to try to manage my hour better. Yeah. You know, rather than trying to force a lock by trying every possible combination. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, no. That works for some people. Yeah. But, and then in each room, there's also, like, a special super secret hidden object that if you won, you got, like, a bunch of points and a special prize. Yeah. Oh, wow. Which neither of us found. Yeah. But it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And um, I would definitely do the experience again. The only thing is, is if they do keep the same uh, rooms, 
Isaac will know how one works and I will know how the other one works because we ended up getting split up. Oh, shit. Well, because both grooms were like, okay, these two are going to be like our best assets, so we have to split them up so that we both have one. Yeah. And they put me in the hard room and her in the easy room. <laughs> There's, well, well, we got basically as it's, far. It's yes and no. It's you have the harder room, but you get more people. Yeah. I had the easy room, but with less people. Honestly, though, I don't think more people is an advantage. No, just, it just really as a personal thing, because it's again as the person who was put into the leadership position, it was too many people to if keep track you, of. But here's the thing: is if you know your team beforehand, yeah. Which of course neither of us did. Yeah. But if you know your team beforehand and you have a good team of people then I think it actually would be a benefit. Yeah. But you really have to be careful about who you're going in with. Yeah. Honestly, I think the best construction would actually be two leader figures. Yeah. One who was, I'd say, more of a puzzler, and one who was more of, like, a, a detail finder. Yeah, an observer. Because I, I kept having to tell my group multiple times, okay, I'm looking for a series of, like, ovals and circles somewhere. If you see anything like that, let me know, because that's the puzzle I'm working on. Because there was like a... Oh, have you ever played Mastermind? Is that the one where you have to figure out the code before the, code like, the other person for... goes before somebody hit gun? It was similar to that, but it was like six different types of code that I had to find throughout the throughout the thing, throughout the rooms. And it was like, whoa, shit. <laughs> There's a lot here. There was like colors, sizes, shapes, directions, and another one. And it was like... Because they managed to open it on the computer, and they just kind of showed it to me. I'm like, okay, well, that's that one, and that's that one. They're like, how'd you get these two? I'm like, because it's right there and right there. <laughs> but I don't have the answers for these other ones, because we don't actually have these codes found. But yeah, like, it was it was a very fun experience. I would do it again. I'd even do the same one again, all things considering. Cause... Well, if it's just going to be us three, we have to do the one that I did, because the other one's four to, four to ten. Yeah, this one's three to ten. No, four to ten. Uh, three to ten on... No, four to ten. Mine is... Three to eight. Okay. Well, anyway, I'd be fine with that. I think we should we should book a time or something. The other bit is yeah. we both failed. If we succeeded, then I probably wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't want to do yeah. it because we know how to get to the end. Yeah. But honestly, in ours, we were in the last room and like three puzzles left. I still had very little clue about how we were going to get out of there. Yeah, we had one puzzle left essentially, and it was very hard to figure out. Um, the last one usually is. Yeah, I wasn't sure exactly how we were going to do it, but eh. <laughs> My room had a bunch of, like, I, I don't want to ruin it. Never mind. I'll stop that story. Yeah, you stop. <laughs> yeah, I'll stop that story, because I don't want to ruin it too much. Okay. I will be collecting them if we do our room, or if we do that room, but there's a small detail that doesn't come in until way late, and I had noticed it the first time we saw it. <laughs> Oh, it was great. Uh, anyway, though, uh, moving on, what else do we have to talk about? We've got, like, eight minutes. Uh, I've been doing a shitload of overtime. <laughs> I saw work. your post. Are you clearing almost uh, one and a half grand? Yeah, it was. It well, this on this last paycheck. Yeah, I'm, I'm like five dollars and change short of fifteen hundred from my paycheck, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, I, 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 but I've had to work for it, right? Yeah. So like, I did uh, two overtime days in one week. I kind of wish that, like, my job I could do overtime like that, but I also don't. Well, here's the bit, is that you're working two jobs right now. So yeah. Yeah. if you were working one, it would be reasonable to grab overtime for one. But because yeah. you have two, you can't grab overtime in the one at the risk that you're going to be letting the other down. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of an odd position I sort of pinched myself into, and I don't really like it, but meh. Meanwhile, I'm crippled and have to wait on mail. You're not crippled. Yeah, you're not. You are not a cripple. Yes, I'm not a cripple, but it's how I feel. <laughs> I identify as a cripple. <laughs> you gonna shame like, me on that? <laughs> well, you could always do uh, work from home stuff. Like you'd be a phone operator. Yeah, I was. Yeah, but this time from home. Yeah, they don't offer that. At least for the ones that. Anyway. <laughs> I, anyway, anyway, well, I shouldn't. I shouldn't say, uh, but uh, the that job, Geo, uh, who hey, shout out to Geo. Yeah. Uh, I pretty much consider him a, uh, my online brother. Yeah. Uh, he he does work from home, like uh, phone call service. He's uh, like, I think he's a uh, like home repair tech for Apple. 
Mm. Yeah, I would like, do that again. He's basically like, did you try turning it on and off? He's, yeah, that's he, he, he that does was my he, job. Yeah. That was my job in phone, and it drove me to the point of insanity. I can believe that, but I mean, like, shit, yeah. it's, it's better than no money. It is. I don't disagree. No, that uh, one drove me to the point of insanity, because there was actually one point in it that I had massive, like, post-traumatic stress disorder, because I got a call from somebody who had recently, like, their sibling had broken in or something and stolen their phone. Because they were like a drug addict or something. And they basically like ransacked them, assaulted the person. And I'm like, you need to call the police. And like... Wait, are you saying you had PTSD from the call? Or they had PTSD from the, from the call? I did. I've been assaulted. Plus, my family is not exactly the best. Like, I was legitimately concerned. I had to go home after that call. Because I couldn't... Like, I was shaking. It was a bad time. Like, every time I picked up that phone, I knew someone had something wrong. And that time, it was something that I couldn't do anything about. And, yeah, I wasn't really the same after. Because, again, I told her that she needed to call the police, but she's like, but it's my sibling, I, I, I can't, or whatever, and, you know. Blah, 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 long story short, I hope they called the police. They finished up with me, and I, like, shut down the phone so that it couldn't be used by that individual, but, you know, what else was there to do? And I, I don't think I would do a phone job again just because... At least the tech support, because every time you answer that phone, someone has something wrong. Well, that's true. Or they're in the wrong place. Yes. Or your boss wants you to start selling packages. Yeah. And I wasn't going to sell packages. I was like, I'm a tech agent, and that is the job that you have trained me for. I'm not going to sell somebody a package. If it would assist them for me to sell them a package, then I will give them to someone whose job it is to sell them a package because I am not going to do it. I actively refused to sell somebody a package. Mainly because I didn't want access to their credit information or anything like that. Like, I wasn't going to take a credit card. I wasn't going to do anything like that. I wasn't even going to help them pay their bill. I was going to get them to someone whose job that was, specifically. And I got in trouble for it multiple times. Yeah, well, telling your your boss, no, I'm not going to do that, is technically insubordination. But it was not my job. Yeah, nobody, actively nobody, not nobody cares. That's not your job. It was actively not my job, and the system that they wanted me to use never told me to do it. It would tell me they sent it to somebody whose job it was. But I was complained that generally, if it was after hours for um, for uh, the like the the non tech department, the for the sales department, if it was after their hours, and I told like the person to call back to that department later because I'm not going to do it for you because it's not my job <laughs> anyway long story short I hated that job and I actively took a non-sales position because I never wanted to sell somebody something and then they tried to make me sell somebody something <laughs> or push like rowing packages on them and I'm like no I'm not going to do it <laughs> because it's not my job I'm not trained to do it I don't know how to do it I don't care if the system is easy to do it it is not my job Anyway, though, long story short, I would never take a call job again. You have heard this. Yes. More than once. Yes, and that's about time. We've got like a minute if there's anything else you want to squeeze in. Oh, wow, really? That was quick. Yeah. Oh, uh, the, um, I don't know. Look forward to new stuff from us. Look forward to the shit show coming from the us. The shit show. <laughs> All right, can we use that title or is that sort of... Mm. Yeah, shit show is a generic term. Yeah. Okay. My job's a shit show at times. <laughs> I think everyone's job can be a shit show at some times. Yeah. Or most of the time. <laughs> anyway, so till next month. Yep. And the shit show. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I just kind of want to throw in a wubba lubba dub dub. <laughs> Later today, I'll be playing o- or a link to the past on my channel, and then tomorrow should be Okami from this one. Yep. And uh, we'll have new Super Mario three. Uh, we uh, we 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 took the time to film the rest of it. Because we did. We, we they that series finally finished painting our building. <laughs> yeah, they oh, spent, that's right. Yeah, they actually had like three days. They had to come paint the balcony. Wow. They kept extending it. Yeah. Anyway, though. Yep. See ya. That's that's our sh- that's our show this month, and we'll see you all next month. Bye bye. Take care, everyone. <laughs>